live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is Wednesday, the, what is it, the 7th, oh my god, Wednesday the 7th of February 2016 and the hour is 1pm. Well my uh, coach, my coach, my co-host uh, Olivia Lashley will be coming to us live from uh, Las Vegas, excuse me, will be coming to us live from London in the UK as soon as we, we get a couple of these things sorted out. Um, you know, we've been trying to, we've been trying to, to do this for, for a minute, you know, like get her, get her sorted. Um, but guys, yep, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. That's technology at its finest. And sometimes technology at its finest can definitely, definitely, definitely throw you these curveballs. Definitely throw you these curveballs. So anyway, guys, I, I'm hoping that you have had um, a really, a really, really, really good week. Our week or my week has actually gone really, really well. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that. Um, you know, you've had a really, really good week, and um, we're seeing if we can uh, pull Olivia up right now as I speak, but uh, she doesn't appear to be online yet, so we'll just give that a few minutes, and we'll see what happens with that, but anyway, guys, welcome to the show. Today, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn, yours truly. I am a coach. I am a choice expert, and I am definitely, definitely, definitely into utilizing the universal laws of attraction so that you can create the life that you say that you want to live. Well, My Life, My Choice is a, a radio show or a podcast radio show, whichever suits your purpose, that's all about me, it's all about you, it's all about us creating the lives that we want to live and creating the lives that we want to live, utilizing the power, and I literally mean the power of our conscious choice. And you, you get to do that. You truly get to do that. You truly get to do that. Um, and you do this, guys, by defining what it is that you want. And I literally mean by defining what it is that you want for you. Very, 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 very important. Very important. So that being said, guys, today's show, and today's show, we're talking about why can't I just get over it. And this is something that, that people that people think about, that, that they think about a lot. This is something that, that people experience a lot. This is something that people go through a lot. This is, something, this is something that happens to people so frequently. And it happens to people so frequently, it's, a, it's almost like an everyday occurrence. And when I say that, guys, what I mean is that getting over it, why can't you just get over it, is a conversation that people have with themselves on a daily basis. And it can be about little things or big things. It's literally about letting go. Well, anyway, the synopsis for this is simply um, letting go, letting go of people, places, and things, hurts, grudges, and feuds is one of the greatest challenges that you will ever face. And I really mean this in life. Why? Because in some shape or form, your wants, your needs, your desires have been minimized. They've been made small and then trampled into seemingly nothingness. Think you're done and that you've got over something. And whatever it is, you fill in the blank. Along comes a button pusher to really put you in check. Letting you know that you are still firmly in its grasp, this thing that you thought that you got over. So why can't you just get over it? Why can't you just let go? And the answer is simple. You are not done with the situation yet. And as a result of that, as I'm going to say as I, as I move forward, as a result of that, the situation isn't done with you. So letting go of people, places and things and grudges and feuds, as I said before, as I just said, is one of our greatest challenges. And it is one of the greatest challenges that you will face. Because as I have just said, in some shape or form, your needs, your intrinsic needs, your desires, your heartfelt desires, 
things that you have worked towards, things that you have put sweat, blood, tears, and energy into have been minimized. They've been made small. They've been made minuscule. They've been made like they just don't matter. And then somebody had stomped that into the ground as they walked away or whatever it is that they did as you, you know, you, 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 you were terminated from your job or whatever it is. It's been, it's been taken down to something, the, the minutest thing that appears to be a nothingness to you. And as a result, that doesn't actually sit well with you. It doesn't make you feel good. And so in, in, in um, many respects, what, what you do is you do the work necessary to support you in this process of letting go because at an intrinsic level, somewhere inside of you, you, you know that you, uh, uh, look, I cannot hold on to this. If I hold on to this, it's going to take me under. If I hold on to this, it's going to make me sick. If I hold on to this, whatever, whatever the holding on, whatever, you've te- whatever you're telling yourself it's going to do, so as a result, as a result of that, as a result of that, you do the work and you do the work necessary for, for your process. And it's an individual thing, your process of letting go. You know, diligently you, you create your affirmations or your self-talk or whatever, whatever phrase you want to use. But diligently for me, you, you create your affirmations and you repeat these repeatedly over and over and over again. And you do the positive thinking and you, you give yourself those stern self-talks about it's time to move forward and you need to let this speak go. And you do all of that. You know, it, it, in, inside of your mind, you've created your very own pep rally, your very own rah-rah corner, you know, your cheerleaders and all that. You've created that. And let me just say this. This is a wonderful thing for you to do. However, there are parameters that need to be in place. But you, you, you've created, you know, your, your own pet rally and you've done, your, done everything and yada, 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 and rah, 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 ray, ray, ray. Yeah, and everything's in place. And then, hey, presto, the feeling's gone. And you say to yourself, I'm over it. And life feels normal. Again, whatever your normal is, whatever the normal is that you were looking for, life feels normal. And then voila, along comes a a button pusher. Along comes something to push a button. And that button pusher puts you in check, letting you know that you are still firmly in its grasp, whatever it is. You're still firmly in its grasp. And then what comes on behind that is some sort of, and I call it, an emotional tsunami. It's not even a, a, you know, a flood. It's a tsunami. And then to add insult to injury, it adds additional layers in the form of questions that say, why can't I just get over this? And now in addition to the, the, the initial thing, you now have added another layer of, why can't I just get over this? And it creates a vicious cycle. A vicious cycle has begun. So, guys, why can't you just, why can't you just get over it? Why can't you just let it go? And you fill in the blank as to whatever it is. And the answer to that question is really simple. Or perhaps, as my sister likes to say, it is simply complex. It is simply complex. Why can't you? Or simply complex. One of the reasons why, and the major reason why, you can't get over it is because you are not done with the situation yet. And the situation is not done with you. Whatever it is, whatever the event that has created those feelings of deep and profound loss, those feelings of anger, those, those feelings of hurt, those feelings, whatever the feeling it is that you're having, whatever the feeling is that has created 
or whatever the situation, I'm sorry, the event or situation that has created that, that, those profound feelings, know that they are triggered. Those feelings are triggered as a cascade of emotions that run throughout your life. So emotions, and emotions play a strong part. Guys, look, emotions play a strong part in our lives. They play a seriously strong part in our lives. Emotions, they tell us things. Emotions, they show us things. Emotions can be gentle or they can be, they can be harsh. They can be kind or they can be cruel. They can, they, they can be anything that they need to be because emotions are showing you something. You know, your emotions are showing you something about yourself and the situation that you find yourself in. Your emotions are showing you something about the situation and yourself within the situation. So it's really important to understand that your emotions are playing a really, really valid role. They're playing a really valid part in what's going on for you. Letting go is showing you. And I really mean this, that one of the things that not letting go is showing you is that that at core or a soul level, you know that you are worthy of more. You know at a core and at a soul level, even if it's not at a conscious level, you know at a subconscious level, which is vitally important, that you are worthy of more and that you want more for yourself than what has just happened. You want more than what has just happened. So it's vitally important to understand that your emotions play a huge role role in what in what's going on in your life and I'm going to talk about emotions in in a hot second because I jotted down some notes here and I need to make sure that everything's flowing the way that I want it to flow but anyway that that being said when I was actually researching this show or this podcast when I was researching this show or podcast I came across so many things on the internet some by, you know, lay people, some by professional people, et cetera, et cetera. All of them giving on advice on just, you know, just let it go or how to get over it and all those sort of things. You know, I came across authors quoting anything from the Bible or scripture to um, Napoleon Hill, to Prentice Mulford, to, to whoever. You know, Prentice Mulford's thoughts are things. And they're quoting words of wisdom and words of wisdom that perhaps you need to integrate in your life. And if you integrate these words of wisdom into your life, magically, you'll be able to get over it and let it go. I was absolutely astounded, guys, when, when an author, I was reading this stuff online, and when an author suggested that um, the solution for, get, for letting something go was absolutely nowhere near the problem. Which, you know, guys, I came off the wall with that one. I came off the wall. I, 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 I disagree with that 100%. I totally and utterly disagree with that 100%. Another went on to say that letting go or holding on, the other went on to say that for you not being able to let go and for you holding on are not or is not the different side or different sides of the same coin. So hopefully I I phrased that correctly, that not letting go and holding on are not the same uh, 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 it's not the different side of a coin and to that I'm like really I was like I was actually a little I I was actually a little startled by that I was like really 
how do you work that out? You know, guys, again, as I was researching this, and believe it or not, I actually do a fair amount of research for whatever show I'm doing. I'm always curious to see what other people are saying, et cetera, et cetera. I look for inspiration, insight, the whole nine yards. The one thing that I do say is that I'm actually true to my core in I'm doing what I want to do, yet still I am very interested in what other people have to say. And so, therefore, vitally important for me to, as I say, do this research so that I can come to you guys with a level of, uh, I want to say, a level of greater understanding, yet have my core, my authentic core within it. So that being said, I saw a lot of stuff out there, and a lot of it left me, I I was actually a little bit surprised. Even some of the professional uh, pieces that I had read, it, it it really did leave me a little bit surprised as to, um, you know, how they were supporting people in their ability to let go. It, it, it really did surprise me. So when you're talking about letting go and moving on or becoming unstuck or getting out of your rut or wherever it is that you feel that you are at, in reality, One of the things that I want you to know that you are doing, which is what, this is what I do. One of the things that I want you to know that you're doing, that you are speaking about invoking universal laws. And this is where the universal laws and um, what we do on this podcast come into play. See, you're talking about the universal law of polarity and the universal law of opposites. We're just talking about these two things. Now, the universal law of polarity speaks to a symbiotic relationship found at each, found at the ends of each spectrum. And so what I mean by this is happy or sad, black, white, hot, cold, that sort of thing. So a symbiotic relationship, this is a relationship that is dependent, they're interdependent on each other. So if you have the color black, true black is the presence of all color, while true white is the absence of all color. Bearing in mind that you cannot have one without the other. This is the the nature of a symbiotic relationship. You cannot have one without the other, yet each has a different vibration, feel, texture, tonal value. It does something different. One, One aspect, positively charged. Say one end of the spectrum is positively charged and the other end of the spectrum is negatively charged. While one is hot, one is cold. One is wet, one is dry. This is what I mean when I, I talk about the, a, a, a symbiotic relationship and the ends of the spectrum. One side will attract and the other will repel. And so it is with life. So it is in your life. And so it is with the, with the situations that you literally have chosen to experience and chosen to experience, you know, by, by the choices that you have made. You have the universal law of opposites. Polarity was what I just spoke on. You have the universal law of, of, of opposites. And opposite speaks to the extremes in your life and not abundance. Abundance is the actual extreme that you experience. But the law of opposite speaks to the extremes in your life and the need for those extremes. You can have abject sadness. I mean, where you're just so sad. Or you can have unbound happiness. You can have love, you can have hate, you can have rage, you can have calm. Opposites opposite provide a contrasting measurement to show you that you've moved in a direction and to quantify it by showing you how far. Without having a quantifiable opposite marker, You'll never know if you've moved on or not. And if you can't quantify it, you won't know how far you've come. And therefore, you'll feel stuck or 
or somebody will come along or somebody or something will come along and they'll push an emotional button and that will take you right back into the situation so much so that you feel like you're reliving it. Literally, you will keep on reliving parts or parts of the event that have created these deep and, and profound emotional triggers. And it's really important to understand that the word emotion, the actual word emotion, comes from the, the, the derivative of emote. And to emote means to show. Emote needs to show. So what you're experiencing in your life, this thing that you say that you can't get over in your life, what you're experiencing is you showing yourself something. And I know I'm going to say this because I jotted this down because it was important. It's something that came up for me. But I'm saying it now. Anyway, you are showing yourself something. And you're showing yourself something that needs to be shown. And it needs to be shown because, once again, deep within you, deep within you, within your core or within your soul, your essence is trying to tell you something. It's trying to tell you something, which is why when you hear people, you know, give, and, and you know, there's nothing wrong with words of wisdom. This is why they're called words of wisdom. But this is why when you hear things, you know, like people say, hey, thoughts become things, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, they, they may have the ability to, to, to trigger you and to um, take you on a specific pathway. But more often than not, they don't give you that, that magical aha so you can just let it go. You know, one of the things as I was reading uh, today and yesterday, for that matter, on, on different things about letting go. One of the things that I had read, you know, they were talking about people, people, you know, uh, letting go. And they're always asking these, and I call them extrinsic questions, you know. How, how you know, how is what you're going through stopping you from moving forward? And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. You know, how can you um, deepen, you know, whatever connection you want to have? But you see, guys, they were asking questions, and I'm saying to myself, before you ask these questions, there needs to be something in place. There has to be something in place. I mean, one of the big things was, you know, reflecting on what's happened. And can you reflect on your past? And can that help you to let go? Well, yeah, to a degree. And while I believe reflecting on your past can be beneficial, it turns into something totally detrimental. And I really mean this, totally detrimental and serves no purpose if you're only reflecting on trying to understand why what happened has happened. And this is where people spend most of their time. This is why they can't get over it. This is why people can't let go of things. Because they spend all this time trying to figure out why what happened has happened. Well, you know, here, what's, what's the thing number here? 411 is happened. No amount of why and understanding why can change it. Now, can why make you kind of feel better about yourself? Yeah, but it cannot change. It cannot change what has happened. You see, guys, it's my professional opinion. And my experience, my professional experience, that most people actually know why the event or situation has occurred. Most people really do. But you see, what, what has happened is that based on all other emotions that may be running for them, they haven't really looked at the situation. They haven't really looked at the situation. They haven't delved into the situation. And it's a situation that they already know because it's, or it's a situation that you already know because it's happened to you. You cannot know it because it's happened to you. You cannot not know it because it's happened to you. If it didn't happen to you, then you don't know it. 
So where I'm going with this is, and once again, most, most people take too much time or spend too much time in trying to figure out why it happened. My thing is stop lying to yourself. You know why it happened. You know why it happened for you. Now, if you want to know why it happened for him or for her or for your ex-boss or for the, the people external to you, that's a different ball game. But you know why it's happened to you. And as I say on this show frequently, your life is happening for you. When you start thinking about your life happening to you, well, guys, hey, presto, guess what's going to happen to you? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be a victim. You're going to be a victim of the circumstances that has been created based on the choices that you have made. You're going to be a victim. So for you, try looking at the situation as, okay, this is happening for me. As we talk about on this show frequently, it's about you being able to step back and look at the situation without becoming emotional, emotionally um, volatile. So you use what we call, what, what, you know, intrinsic coaches, or should I say the coaches that I've trained, call detached involvement. You're attached, but you need to, you, you, you need to be detached yet involved. So that you can look at the situation without getting all uptight, without crying, without this, without that, without becoming sad the whole nine yards. So again, it's, in my, it's my professional opinion that most people know why the situation and event has occurred. What they don't know, what the inability to let go, where that comes into play, is because they don't actually know what this situation is really showing them. And believe me, your situation is showing you something. See, guys, it's very, very easy to get caught up in, in the wash of focusing on, I have to let this go. I have to let this go so I can move on with my life. I have to let this go. You know, I, 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 I must let it go. I just, I have to get over this so I can move forward with, in, in my life. If I get over this, I can let go, I can move forward. So it's easy to get caught up in that wash. It's really easy. But guys, I'm here to tell you, if you are saying that you are working on, focusing on, just getting over this so you can let it go, but you don't have anywhere to go with this process beyond the thought of just getting over it so you can let it go, you're not going to go anywhere. You see, because if there's no thought beyond just getting over it, whatever it is to you, if there's no thought beyond letting go of it, whatever it is you feel you need to let go, if you haven't defined what you want to fill that space, you're not going anywhere. So you need to define what it is that you want to fill that space, that, that, that void that will be there. You have to define that so that you can work towards that. If you haven't got clarity around where you want to be, how can you get there? If you haven't got clarity around where you want to be when you get over this, well, where are you going? If you don't have clarity on what it feels like to be over this or what it even sounds like to be over this or what it looks like to be over this situation, where are you going? Sitting down and just saying the words that, you know, I, I, I want to get over this long term isn't something that's going to help you long term. And so as a, result, as a result, without the clarity, without the definition or defining what you want to fill that space for you, one year, two year, three year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years later or more, you're still focusing on this painful event that, that literally changed your life. And as a result, you're stuck, stuck in this wash. And any little thing that happens, you can reflect back to 
oh, you know, when, 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 when we were together or when I had my job or, you know, when I wasn't ill or when this happened, you, you, you can go right back into it and right back into it with all the emotions. You can emote because emote is about, about you showing. Emotions show you something to emote. It's to show. So you can go right back into it. And you never move on. And so you can't just get over it. You can't let it go. Get over it so you can't move on. And as a result, your life is stuck. Or at the very least, it is a series of stops and starts and stops and starts. And if you're talking about relationships, you know, many people will have experiences and they, they, they'll go into another relationship and they'll be carrying this, this baggage with them and or they won't develop another relationship because they're like, well, I don't, I don't really understand why she did this, why she left me, or I don't understand why he left me, or I'm not going to work in this industry anymore because I don't understand why they would fire me and blah, blah, blah. No. No. You see, one of the strongest reasons that is preventing you from just getting over whatever it is in your life is simply you haven't had your say. You haven't been able to emote, show, and or express how you truly feel. You haven't been able to say what you feel about what they did to you. And at some level, which is overshadowing everything else that you're doing, at some level, and this is where the truism comes, you want them to experience your version of what it feels like to be minimized and trampled into nothingness. You want them to feel. You want them to feel exactly what you have felt. You want them to feel it. You want them to feel it and with added good measure to the power to the to the power of a hundred. Never mind to the tenth degree, to the power of a hundred. That's how you want them to feel it. And this is one of the biggest reasons, and I really mean this, why people just can't let go. I've seen this in my practice. I've I've experienced it personally. I've seen it. I see it all the time. You, too, feel like you felt based on what was done to you. Now, chances are, are this. You might get to have your say. All right? You might get to have your say, and that's, that's definitely doable. But hear me clearly, guys. This is a total waste of energy because it's not going to happen. For them to experience what you have experienced because of their actions towards you is never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And why? Why is it never going to happen? Because we are all individuals and we all emote differently. We all show emotions or show stuff to ourselves differently. We all express differently. So our experiences will always be different because they're individual and they're uniquely tailored to who we are. So you actually get to choose how you spend your energy. You get to choose what it is that you really want to do. You get to choose how long it is that you want to not get over what it is that you keep saying that you want to get over and let go, but you don't let go because you can't get over it. This is your world. But understand, with every choice, with every choice which is an action comes a reaction. With every choice comes a consequence, good or bad. It just is. The name of the game is 
What is the is that you want for yourself? What is it that you want for you now? So she left you. He left you. You got fired. They took your home. They took your car. You're still standing, right? What is it that you want for you? And we're going to address that in just a hot second. So that being said, how do you get over something? Well, what I want to say here, I want to add a caveat here is getting over something. That's a phrase that I always find interesting. Um, that, and it truly is a phrase that I find interesting. So what I'm going to say with this is, depending on the situation, you may need to weave it into the fabric of your life. Um, and I mean something like death of a loved one or somebody, somebody that you hold or you held very dear. I don't believe that there are certain things in particular, death, that you get over and some other things that may have happened to you. But what I do know is that you can definitely weave them into the fabric of your life and weave it into your life in such a way that it makes you stronger. And, of course, you get to choose how you, how, what, what aspect of whatever's happened will make you stronger. And as you weave things into your life, there's a process of learning to live with it. Um, I'll take it back. Sorry. As you weave it into your life, it negates the process and it stops the process of learning to live with it, whatever it is. Because when you start trying to learn to live with a situation, that means you're trying to cohabitate, cohabit, cohabit, yeah, cohabit or cohabitate, whatever it is. You're trying to, you're trying to create a harmonious um, uh, situation. And when you're trying to create a harmonious situation, it is a true indication that harmony isn't there if you are trying to create it. So when you have a situation, again, depending on what it is, my thing is weave it into your life. Weave it into your life in such a way that the experience supports you in your personal growth, that supports you in being of service to others, that supports you in the way in which you can add content, content and um, texture to your life. And so what do I mean by that? You have a loved one who has passed, you have a loved one who has passed on. Ask Ask yourself, what is it, what is it that they have brought to your life, are showing to you? What is it, what is it that they have brought to your life? What is it that they are showing you? What is it that their life has, has, has shown you? What is it, three things that you can take? Three things, and I mean three things that you can take from your experience, your experience with the loved one who's passed over. Three things, three things that you, three things that you can take, and three things that you can add to your life. Three things. Three. What 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 is the wisdom? What is the most profound? Um, wise thing that this person has ever said to you? What is it? And then ask yourself, is this something that can assist and support you as you move through life, making your choices? Can it assist and support you? Can it do that? Can it support you? Can it do that? It's vitally important that you, that you look at this what is it from your experience with that person that you can take so that you can um, be of service? You can take it and utilize it and be of service to yourself, but also be of service to others. Was the person who made their, com their, 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 their transition, were they compassionate? Was something that, is that something that you can do to assist and support others using compassion? Using compassion, is it? What way?
way, what, in what ways can you add content of your life for having known that person? Are they somebody who laughed a lot? Is this something that you can add to the content of your life so that you can laugh too? So that you can experience the joys of laughter? What is it that you can add to your life based on the fact that you have known this person who's made their transition? And what does it then look like for you to weave it into your life, into your daily life? You know, and I'm going to get off this subject, but what I would say with getting over it, i.e. somebody who's made their transition, I'm a true believer, so it wouldn't be my experience, that you don't get over it. I'm a true believer that you incorporate, you incorporate them into, into your life because they are forever a part of your life, your soul, and who you are. So why not weave some of what they have done, what they have left, what they have said into your life. And once you weave it into your life, you don't have to worry about get, getting over it or you don't have to worry about, you know, I don't want to forget them and all the other things that come up that prevent you from just getting over it and letting it go. That becomes nil and void because you don't have to forget them. You don't have to put them in this, in, in this place where you don't have to look at it. You don't. So, getting over a breakup or if you've been fired from your job, um, you know, he dumped you, she dumped you, you know, yada, yada, yada. Getting over that, getting over that can be, can be a challenge. It can be a challenge. And I believe personally and professionally that it, it requires a different approach Although you can definitely use the same approach that you use for somebody who's made their transition because when something, you know, a relationship is done, it's a death. You lose your house, it's a death. It has that same sort of vibrationary um, energy. And so, although I say you may require a different approach, you, I, I believe that you do. So the first question to ask yourself, you, you, you're, having a tr you're having trouble getting, getting over this. The first, the first question to ask yourself really is this. Do you feel ready to actually look your part, your role in this situation? What was your role? Because at the end of the day, if it's two people, four people, five people, you are the common denominator. Are you ready to really look at your role without casting aspersions, without casting blame, and that's even on yourself? Are you ready to address the situation? Because if you are still too highly charged and the answer to that is no, you're not getting over it. It's not going to happen because you're going to keep, you're going to find yourself back in the wash and you're going to keep going over and you keep being covered by this tsunami of emotions that take over. If you are truly ready, then guys, the question to ask yourself is, are you ready to address, am I ready to truly address my role in this situation? But I didn't do anything. Yeah, you did. You showed up and it happened to you. So are you ready to address your role in this situation? The next question to ask yourself is literally this, guys. As you look beyond the actual situation and all the players, all the emotions and everything that you are feeling, as you look beyond this, what are you wanting for yourself in this moment? What are you wanting for you now? What are you wanting? As you look beyond this situation, what are you wanting for yourself? And if you say something like peace, you say something like, um, another job, if you say something like freedom, if you, if you say what, whatever word you use or whatever phrase you use, then the next question to ask yourself is, what does that look like? What does peace within the context of what you have just said to me, what does that look like to you? And then tell me what it feels like to you. Tell me what it sounds like to you. Tell me what it smells like. Tell me what it tastes like. Because when you can put your five senses to it, I guarantee you will get through it. If you are unable to do that,
that, or at least three of your senses, it's not going to happen, guys. You see, it's about having an internal dialogue that is forward in its momentum. How is it going to help you to talk about what's happened over and over and over again? You already know what's happened. Why? Why? Does it actually really matter? Does it really, really matter? Why is something that might give you clarity as to, okay, this happened, that happened, and that happened? Okay, so now you know why. What are you going to do now? My question is, how does knowing why help you get over where you are and move on? You can let go because you know why? I'm here to tell you the question why usually, usually invokes a whole other slew of questions as to, well, well, why, why couldn't he just have said that, you know, he didn't like how I did this? Or why couldn't she have just said that, you know, when I did this, I got on her nerves? Why couldn't you? No. It, it, you know, no, the name of the game is what, what are you wanting from here? What does it truly look like for you to be free of the emotions? that are holding you down because of this situation. And that's the kind of question, the line of question that you need to ask yourself. Those are the lines of question that you need to ask yourself. Your dialogue needs to be intrinsic and not extrinsic, i.e., how is this situation stopping you from moving forward? Well, It's stopping me from moving forward because it makes me depressed. It makes me angry. It makes me this. It makes me that. It makes me all the other. That's how. That's what it's doing to me. That's how. Okay, so you know that. So I'm going to ask you, how does that help you? Okay, so you know it. How does it help you? How? You know, in, in, and you know, how, how can you deepen a, a connection with yourself to, 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 to move forward? How can you deepen a connection with yourself to move forward? How can you do that? How can you do that? It makes it extremely, extremely difficult. Well, guys, again, I am not sure. Uh, today it has been really squirrely on this. I actually just put some more time up for the show and it's not doing it for me. So what I would say to you guys is I thank you for your patience and for listening in and being patient with me today. I hope this has uh, supported you in some way. I think maybe I'll finish this dialogue on Facebook. Hopefully it won't be as squirrely as this. But I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time, know that you can get over it. You need to know what you want to put in that place. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time, guys.